Hey there, Antioch. It's an exciting week. We're going back into the building. Now, there's a couple things you need to know to be ready for Sunday. Number one is that we have two services. It is at 8.30 and at 10.15. Uh, number two is that if you don't want to go back into the building, we have options for you. Number one, the first one we have is the streaming. Uh, so you'll be able to watch the service on YouTube live as it's happening. We're going to stream the 8.30 service. And so anytime after 8.30, if you want to jump on the internet and watch, you're welcome to do that. And that's available for you. The other option is that we're going to do a modified drive-in. So we're asking that you come back and park in the same parking lot where we have been. That way our ushers will be able to get you a bulletin if you want one or take up an offering. Um, and you will be able to hear what's going on inside the building. Now, there won't be the truck out here, and we won't have the, the preacher out here. Dr. White won't be preaching out here. But you will be able to hear what's going on in the building. For those of you who are ready to go back inside, we have some options. Here's our main option. We are whoo, going back inside into the worship center, which is exciting. We're asking that you use the center doors when you come in. Uh, there will be ushers here to open the door for you. And when you come inside, you will see that we have hand sanitizer, masks, Clorox wipes. Uh, there's a table on both sides. We're still setting things up, so it doesn't look super pretty. But by Sunday, uh, it should be better. Anyhow, so you can get your hand sanitizer, grab your mask if you want one, whatever. When you go back into the worship center, we're asking that you use the center doors and households can sit together so you can sit with your family. We are going to mark off every other pew. So some pews will be blocked off and you won't be able to sit there. Uh, that way we can make sure that we spread out and social distance enough uh, in, in the building to help kind of keep people safe. Uh, there are two other options if you don't want to come back in here. There is the option to go in the gym. We will have it playing on the TVs in the gym, and you can just grab a chair, find yourself a spot, and sit down and enjoy. Uh, the other option is the chapel. The chapel will be open, and uh, you'll be able to sit in there and watch it on the screen as well. So, lots of options. There will be no nursery. There will be no Sunday school this week. Uh, as we move forward through the month of June, we'll be reevaluating all of that and seeing what we can do to kind of get things back more normal but we want to make sure that we're being cautious and um, considerate of the people in our congregation who are vulnerable so we're working hard here at Antioch to make sure that our church is a safe and healthy environment for you to come and worship with us as we re-enter our building but there is a risk we're a people that love to sing and singing is part of every worship service we've had, and it's hard to imagine one where we didn't. But most experts are saying that singing is a high-risk activity. They say that singing puts out six times more particles than normal speech. It's on the same level as a cough. And where a long cough might last 20 seconds, our average worship song is about four minutes long. So when you put a large group of people together into a room and they sing together, they're creating a rather large particle cloud in that room. It's hard to know what to do with that. Uh, this virus is still very new and the science is changing daily. Every day we seem to get new information. At first it was, it lives on surfaces and so everything needs to be wiped down. And then they say, oh, it doesn't live on surfaces, it's okay. Then they say, wear a mask. And then they've said, don't wear a mask. So it's hard to say what is really going on and what the risks really are. One of the things that we have done here to try to understand our risk is we did an experiment in the sanctuary where we filled it up with fog and then we turned on the air conditioners and the air handlers to see how long it took to change out the air in the room. Doing that it took a little over an hour and a half to completely change out the air in the room and remove all of the fog particles. With that knowledge we're trying to steer a middle course where instead of doing our normal worship service where we would have four or five songs, special music and choir, uh, and instead of doing no singing, 
we're going to sing one song and we'll sing it congregationally. You are invited to sing because worship is something we do together. It's not something that we watch like a football game. But you've got to decide for yourself if that's an acceptable level of risk. There is the question of singing with a mask on. As a singer, I cannot recommend that you do that. Singing is an aerobic activity, and so I can't recommend that you would do that any more than I would recommend that you go jogging with a mask on. You're gonna be rebreathing your own carbon dioxide, and over time, that's not gonna be good. Now, for the amount of time we'll actually be singing, the chances of you having an issue, very small, but it is a risk. As I said, the science is changing daily. Most churches are going back into their buildings on June 7th. And so the month of June is gonna be interesting to watch to see what happens with this virus as people are coming back together, as communities of faith around the country are coming back together. And it's something that we're monitoring as a staff and we will be reevaluating every week. Did this work? Is it something that people are willing to do? Where are we as a church? So if you have any questions about what we're doing, if you have any uh, comments that you would like to share, please feel free to give us a call here at the church office. You can email me, my email is in the description. I've also included links in the description to where you can get more information about the science around singing and the spread of the coronavirus if you're interested in it. Uh, there's also a link there to Southeastern Regional's website where you can see our actual COVID numbers in the county, including how many people are in isolation at the hospital. Those are all things that we're taking into consideration as we move forward. Again, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to give us a call. I love y'all. Hope to see you soon.